This is Somewhere in the Skies with Ryan Sprague. Jason, man, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. I know you're a busy dude, but um, thank you for coming on Somewhere in the Skies to talk to us today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and as much as I want to talk about Dark Side of the Ring, the huge craze on Vice right now and in the wrestling world, <laughs> you're here to talk about UFOs and alien <laughs> abductions, man. So I hope this is a little uh, a, a good trip down memory lane for you today. Definitely. As, it's yeah. been like almost like gosh, like ten years, I think, since we made the short film, wow. and uh, it's uh, that that short is. There's a lot of me and my childhood within it. Not only just like the crazy antics that me and my friends got up to when we were kids, but my fear of aliens growing up. You know, I was a kid that like as early as the fifth grade, I picked up a book about aliens. And I became obsessed and just started like going down the rabbit hole of reading every book I could about alien abductions and stuff at that time. And um, there was definitely a big inspiration was uh, that movie Fire in the Sky when it came out. Right. I remember just seeing trailers on TV for it. And I was so terrified just from the trailers alone that like, it, but it like, it piqued my interest like so much. So even though I was probably too young to watch the movie, just seeing the trailer on TV, like I could, you know, go to the library at school. And even at, at my elementary school, they had like books about UFOs and stuff. And so right. I was kind of, you know, without my parents looking, like I was like diving into that stuff <laughs> and getting way too scared and my imagination running with it. But it all like came together for that short for that short film yeah and you could tell um you know sort of the the way you structured it and everything it's got that feel of how we've heard these actual events sort of happen now you went down the horror route which um man i, t I within that short which i think was like 14 15 minutes i had to stop it like four or five <laughs> times my heart was racing but um well you answer my first question what kind of inspired you to make it um that's pretty cool i remember same thing fire in the sky terrified me as a kid um when mm -hmm. i finally sat down and watched it and then saw that based on true events like i know that, like, yeah shook my foundation i was like are you kidding me like same what? here i know yeah same here and like as a kid too i um i was like in my youth i experienced a lot of like sleep paralysis moments where mm -hmm. um i would see like you know, at night, I it, like sleep paralysis is like you're kind of like stuck between dreaming and being in the, you know, in the real world. And mm -hmm. I was having these moments where I'd be like, I'd wake up frozen in my bed and these like dark figures would come into my room and surround my bed. But I had no, there was no internet or anything back then. And I talked to my parents about it and they would just take me to the doctors. And, you know, the, there was no ever like explanation as to like why I was you know, experiencing these things. And, it, you know, to me, I almost thought like, oh no, like, am, am I experiencing like alien abductions of some kind? Or I didn't know how to process it until I was in college. And I was actually like on a film set and we were filming this short film and I was telling my teacher, um, one of my teachers at the time, these sleep paralysis experiences that I was having. And he was like, oh, like, that's, you know, it's this thing called sleep paralysis. And he told me a couple theories on it. And then I went home and I looked it up and I was like, oh my God, this is a thing that like a lot of people like experience. So um, I like with a mix of those feelings from the sleep paralysis stuff and having my nightmares from, um, from things like fire in the sky and just like reading books about, you know, alien abductions, um, that all like accumulated into, yeah, that short. Um, yeah, yeah, it was gestating <laughs> in the back of your mind, man. It has Slumber been, party, yeah. Alien abduction is what we're talking about, guys, yeah. if you're just joining us. Um, well, and this was a short within an anthology series, uh, VHS2. Yeah. A lot of people are probably familiar with that and the original. Um, and 
you know, this is the one that really stood out to a lot of people in VHS too. And um, I'd like to know, man, like, yeah, it was a 15 minute film, but how long did it take? What was the process like, it was uh, like filming? Yeah, it was only, uh, I think we had four days to shoot it. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And then it was, you know, it all took place at my, my parents' home and the dog in it is our, it was our family dog at the time. And oh. I like, uh, I was really at the time, like also inspired by um, like ride films. Like, I don't know if you ever went to like uh, Universal Studios and went on the Back to the Future ride. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, you're, it's a movie, but like you're, going through this experience that's like a ride and mm -hmm. uh Stuart Gordon who uh, was an incredible director who um did from beyond and reanimator he made one of these ride films um for the movie aliens uh for, for um some theme parks and it's cool because it's like all from the point of view of that you know the tank and aliens that mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver and the Marines drive into the into that uh colony and it's like it's just all POV and taking you through this experience, driving through, and aliens are popping out. And I was just like getting really into the mindset of that, and the challenge, the challenge we had what for the anthology was to make like a found footage short film, and so I was like, oh, I really want to make a ride movie, and like Stuart Gordon had also worked on uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as well too, and so mm -hmm. this idea of being on the perspective of a dog was like really intriguing to me that yeah, this whole alien really invasion, yeah it could like just be from the perspective of their of the pets you know and um and so yeah i was like leaning into that while you know it's uh and also just a lot of my nightmares um as a kid were you know me and my friends like hanging out and then like something is coming for us at my home and i have to run like through backyards to like neighbors homes and stuff and i i would just have dream like I, I like I used to have dreams that Predator was like chasing me in my backyard <laughs> or the T-Rex from Jurassic Park was, you right. know, and so I wanted to create, that was also a big inspiration is that like you're being with your friends and you're running from your life from something that, you know, is coming for you. Absolutely. I think we can all relate to like what's out there in the woods, mm -hmm. especially in an isolated area. I think, you know, oh, that's yes. why these found footage films, uh, resonate so much with people and i think why they're still here is because we can all find something to you know uh mm -hmm. relate to in terms of what could be out there and what's oh i know what's yeah. out there to get us um well yeah what's out there to get us that's something i want to talk to you about man the creatures the aliens in these in this thing was terrifying um how'd you come up with your creature design what was that creative process like yeah it was pretty simple because it just was the version of you know of all this the the sketches i've seen from you know people who have said they've experienced encounters with aliens and you know the gray alien has always been you know, like scary to me even though it's like a it's a bipedal figure that's standing on two feet but it's almost human like and there was like i don't know maybe as a kid there was just a part of me that was like there was something scary about the idea that aliens in my head was that they could just enter your home without you know it doesn't matter if the doors and windows are locked yeah. they'll find a find a way in and and maybe it was partly because of the sleep paralysis figures that i saw were also like you know just look like dark figures you know just shapes of they're very human-like you know but the with the aliens it's like they're human-like you know but if you got a little closer you see that like oh they're fingers are longer and like their heads are you know a little bigger and like um so it was mostly just being inspired by the classic sort of gray alien but i was really i wanted like so i'm from nova scotia and we have a really famous ufo story here which is the story of shag harbor which i don't know if right. you're familiar with yeah i'm very familiar i've been okay i've been yeah. in your neck of the woods a couple times now for uh for oh, some UFO great. hunts out in Shag Harbor. So oh, yeah, my audience okay. is I, definitely going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, cool. I was just down yeah. there two weeks ago and um, nice. hanging out with some of the local fishermen who, you know, had heard Ooh. stories and had I'm worked sure with that guys. Was yeah. Who had, yeah. who had saw that stuff. But yeah, the Shag Harbor happened in 1967 where the ship, you know, had crashed into the Harbor and a bunch of fishermen thought, Oh, that could be an airplane. We got to get out there and look for survivors. 
and they get out there and they just see like lights under the water and foam like on the surface and then um you know for days later the, you know the the supposedly the u.s uh, navy posted up and they brought out divers and they were hauling things up and that no one could see and yeah. i like i just always was creeped out because i you know living here and that idea that like if a ship was like underwater and i was always told even like i had a i had an uncle uh who was in the navy and i when i was 13 and like you know being interested in aliens and ufo stuff i like asked him about it if he knew anything and he had heard all these stories from guys in the navy as well too and you know they had heard that like that ship had like crashed and another ship came underwater and connected with that ship and they were connected for a couple of days and then they both took out under traveled underwater and then lifted out up down the gulf and back into you know aerospace um but the idea that they could be underwater and that they or it, either it's a crash landing or it's a a place that they've come to like fuel up but that the that they could it, the idea that they just take hiding in a yeah. in a harbor um and or in a, under a body of water was so scary to me and that i wanted to try something different where you know we've seen a lot of abductions where it's you know a, a beam of light that comes down and pulls you up but what's if the aliens just take you and just literally drag you to the ship and in, in that short, my idea was that even though I, we don't have the budget to show it or anything, was that those kids are being dragged into the water oh, and being God. taken down oh. to a UFO that's like at the bottom of the of the harbor. Yeah, that yeah. that man, that was the most effective part. I never seen an alien abduction uh, film or scenario where literally you're being dragged into the depths of the water, which, like yeah. you said. Is that was actually my next question is um, the way you used water in this film. We're hearing so much now, you know, with the U.S. Navy and the Pentagon and stuff that like all these Navy people saw UFOs and the, mm -hmm. the Pentagon actually investigated them. They think there's some connection with like the Pacific Ocean. So, yeah, who knows, man? There's so much mystery down in the water that we don't oh, know yeah. about. You know, I Definitely. always say, like, you want to look for aliens, stop looking up there, look down there. So I, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I loved that way that you did this in the film. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Um, I want to ask you just a few more here, Jason. Yeah. Um, what uh, What are your personal thoughts on the abduction phenomenon? I mean, millions of people now throughout the decades have claimed this has happened to them. Um, you know, you mentioned sleep paralysis is probably a big explanation mm -hmm. for a lot of these. But you've got, like stable sane people law enforcement teachers um whatever mm -hmm. clergy men and women like claiming these abductions and stuff like what do you make of this whole phenomenon do you think people are actually being taken by aliens out there and i don't know I, I feel it's not my quite my place to say i'm very open-minded to you know a lot of different things like uh yeah. so i think you know anything is possible i wouldn't you know I wouldn't jump to discredit those people, you know, if they really believe in what they've been through, you know, I would, uh, I would respect that and, uh, you know, want to know more, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, all, I'm always intrigued. I'm not a, someone who would jump to deny, you know, that their, their experiences. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen things, you know, I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen aliens. I've seen, you know, what I would I thought to have been UFOs uh, throughout my life, but I definitely have I've experienced supernatural sort of things as well too. So, you know, who's to That's say cool. how this yeah. world works? <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. I think you know we're still young as mm -hmm. a uh, species. There's so much out there. I know. I, get that. I totally yeah. get that. Um, well, what kind of uh, what kind of alien films really? inspired you i know fire yeah. in the sky um what are some fire of your sky, favorites out there yeah fire in the sky is definitely a big one for me obviously the you know that end sequence where it shows the abduction is so amazing and how they hint at all these little things you know to expand upon the world like i just love like when that guy's being dragged through the ufo and you 
there's like he hits like a set of glasses that just like starts spinning and yeah. i think you even see a baby carriage or something in there as well too and like it just it felt old and there's that room where the tunnel where there's all the pods of other right, past right. abductees that are in there and i love that moment where he like he loses his balance and he falls into another pod and he like his hands land in goo and he looks and he sees there's like a corpse like like his hands just melt like went through the corpse like oh, yeah. that's such a crazy idea um uh but it you're like like you said you know because it said it was based on a true story it really like had an effect on me now when i read the actual story and the account is much different than the right. movie it's actually a much cooler experience that he went through than a terrifying thing that the movie does but the movie you know, is it's great at the the horror aspect of it, and to me, the most effective, scariest part in the film is like when um, the family keeps getting like prank phone calls, yeah. and then he finally calls, and they realize it's actually him, and then they go looking for him in the pouring rain, and the lightning, and they find him like naked next to an ice machine at a gas station, like curled up in a ball. And, they try to go touch him and he's so like freaked out. That scene yeah. is oh, like so freaky to me. Um, Five days that, that guy was missing. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I've, I've talked to the actual guy and like oh, you mentioned, wow. um, yeah. you know, a lot how it's Hollywood. Like we get it, you know, mm -hmm. we get like they have to um, kind of spruce <laughs> it up or make it. But he has said like, yeah, like maybe what they showed wasn't how it happened, but like the way I felt was definitely, yeah, you know, how they interpreted it. That's but, cool. Um, yeah, you're right. The things back on the ground were a bit more unsettling than even like the the abduction itself. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a it's a really good film, and I think it still really holds up. Um, I'm trying to think, another one um, was um, oh, well, what's it called? The one with uh, Christopher Walken. Um, oh, uh, communion. Communion, yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was like, a trippy movie. Yeah, that had an effect on me as a kid. It's been a long time since I've, since I've seen it again, so I don't know how it holds up. But there was that one moment where the alien like peeks in through like a door or something. Yeah, like definitely had an effect. And um, but yeah, I don't know. It was, like a lot of it was just kind of those are like, good ones. Yeah, based on like on my fears and how fire in the sky made me feel and. And kind of interpreting it in my own way with my own fears. Cool, man. Um, is is horror like your thing? Is that where you find yourself <laughs> most comfortable behind the lens and everything? Or I, do you want to try to tackle other stuff, dramas yeah, and yeah, I'm kind of down for whatever. You know, it's yeah. like like Dark Side of the Ring is like a whole other, you know. That's like, drama right there. At the, yeah, at the end of this season, we have done like 30 stories that are all different kind of, you know, stories and dramas. And so, and there's some of those kinds of stories I'd love to take, you know, into a feature film sort of way, you know. Um, but um, I've always been like a huge fan of the genre. And that's like, I grew up, you know, making horror and action movies and i'm prepping one right now and so you know Ooh. it's uh uh nice. yeah it's something i've i'll yeah i always thrive in, in in this world for sure cool man well hey full disclosure uh chris jericho is the one who kind of put us in touch and you did yeah. mention dark side of the ring um <laughs> what's coming up next with dark side of the ring i know you have an episode premiering tonight if i'm not yeah. mistaken um yeah, we tell got us a little about that uh, on Luna Vachon, who is like this incredible woman wrestler, who uh, her story is, it's inspiring, but also tragic too. Um, she was someone who just like had such an incredible passion for wrestling and uh, but came up in a time in women's wrestling where women's wrestling wasn't very really highlighted. Like mm -hmm. uh, for women, a lot of their place in the industry then was like being a valet of some sorts and, she just really wanted to wrestle and she battled a lot with addictions and mental illness and um and that ended up uh taking uh control of her life and over her but there is so much uh, um 
about her story that is really inspiring and powerful. And then after that, there's a story about XPW, which is like this crazy independent um, uh, wrestling promotion that um, mixed, uh, it was like a porn company that got into wrestling. And so it was like a, a mix of like those two worlds like together. And Ooh. I don't want to say too much about it because like you just have, I, I love just like putting that episode on for people a lot of friends I know who grew up with wrestling don't know that story so much. Like some of the other indie promotion stories never really caught like some of my friends, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, their attention. Um, also being here from Nova Scotia, it was so hard to even right. know about these other promotions like growing up. And then the last one is about the, the, the infamous steroid trials where this man was indicted by the government um for the use of uh steroids in, in his company uh and that'll be a great way to kind of end the season but yeah um hopefully uh you know uh the role will continue making more of them um after after this season's over yeah in the world of wrestling there's never never there's too many stories to be told and uh mm -hmm. i i will say this man um the the chris benoit two-part series the owen hart one like that oh was yeah some of the best television i've ever oh, seen oh wow thank you so um, much yeah yeah those the were way really you told those stories it was just amazing oh thanks yeah those are very definitely close to our hearts like those were man very emotional um i can't uh, imagine yeah yeah it was a quite the journey of making yep. those episodes i'll never forget for sure <laughs> yeah. well Jason, I'm sure the journey's not over, man. I know you're like in production right now. You were so gracious to give me your time. I I told you 10 minutes. Here we go. 25 minutes late. No, it's all good, man. <laughs> this has been fun. I, I love the chance to be able to talk about uh, that short because yeah. uh, it means a lot to me and I, I'm very proud of it. And uh, I love hearing when like people who um, who are also like me and were interested in this stuff like growing up and had fears of it that when they see the short, they really connect with it because it like kind of, it like, uh, it kind of shows the same fears in a way that, you know, that, that, that they had as well too. And so I, 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 every once in a while I'll see someone like write a Twitter post or something about it. And like, man, this was so scary. The way they portrayed aliens in it, like, you know, people just yep. give props to like how we did that. And I, I, I think that's cool. Absolutely, man. You have forever cemented your legacy in found footage <laughs> film. And I loved it, dude. So I want to thank you for coming on Somewhere in the Skies today. Let's do yeah, it no again. Problem. And we yeah. will we will get deep into Dark Side of the Ring. But uh get cool. back to work. Can't yep. wait to see what you come up with next. Awesome. Thank you so much.